Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is not being filmed on my iPhone but it is still being interrupted and disturbed by Oscar who is here now to ruin my filming. Oscar, where do you think you're going? Okay, Oscar, look, you can see yourself. Don't need to touch the camera. Can you just not try and touch the camera? Don't touch the camera, okay? Thank you. Oh, careful. <sighs> Got the camera lens cap. Are you gonna leave now? No. Oh, great. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Oh, I'll just leave him to play with it for a little bit. Anyway, what I wanna to talk to you about real quick is the great, what's it called? The Great Firewall of China. And I watched a video just now about how it works and stuff like that, which I already kind of knew, but it just got me thinking, why do they have that? And I know the hypocrisy of all this because I'm in China now and I'm using YouTube. I know, I know, I know, but, you know, I'm used to being on YouTube and stuff, um, but people in China are not, but they have their own version of YouTube in Chinese. So why would they need YouTube, which is all in English and other foreign languages? They don't need that. They've got their own version, which is actually a little bit better in terms of the features, not the content. That's not the point. The main point is the Great Firewall of China is needed because you think about the population of China, it's like all of Europe and America and Canada and Australia, all that population doubled. That's like the population of China. Something like that, about something like that. Um, 1.4 billion people, billion, yes. So can you imagine like, I just look at the UK, for example, and UK politics. It's talking about Brexit and the Tory party, Labour party, or America talking about like um, President Trump and um, the scandals around impeachment and all that stuff. And if all that was happening in China with 1.4 billion people, like being able to access Facebook or the equivalent of Facebook and share all this stuff, you know, without any kind of penalty or punishment, you know. The country would be crazy. The country would have had so many civil wars, fights, um, national scandal, all sorts of mental crazy stuff. Now they do have their own version of every single website that we have in the West. So whatever you can think of, like that's popular, like Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, whatever, they have their own version of that. It's not a copy, it's their own version. Maybe it started as a copy, but then now it's completely different and it's their own version. And they have message boards as well, and they have chat rooms, they have all of that. But the only difference is everything is sort of monitored. Um, there's different levels of monitoring. So there's the government monitoring and then there's the companies themselves who are monitoring and deleting stuff before it can go viral. So the companies, it's their responsibility, um, as in if, if, if Facebook was in China, like if Facebook was Chinese and people were commenting, saying bad stuff about the leader, then Facebook would be shut down. It wouldn't just be like a thing of, oh, they're gonna get fined. They would just shut the company down. It would disappear. And all the comments and everything along with it would just disappear off the internet. So it's in the company's own interest to self-censor. So the platforms here like um, Yoku and WeChat and Weibo, the um, version of Twitter, all these companies, if you start writing something that is, um, you know, likely to cause uproar or something about the government or something about a leader like this, if you start writing that, it's just, it's just gonna disappear. The only things that sort of are allowed to go viral are the things where um, the authorities save the day. So maybe there's like a video of a thief who stole something or a video of someone attacking kids at a school that could even go viral as long as they were caught by the heroes um the police or the security or whatever it is they're the only ones that i see going viral the ones where the government has saved the day they're the only ones that go viral everything else you never hear about something that's just like it happened and there's no resolution never never because they just get cancelled they just get squashed before they're allowed to go viral group chats the messages are removed and the filters, so if you type something that's about a current ongoing scandal, if you type it onto the version of Twitter, use a hashtag or type whatever you want about it, even stuff that sounds like it but isn't it, and you press send, you'll just get an error message, like, it can't be sent. 
and on WeChat, it will send, but it will never be received. So you can see it on your phone like it's sent, but the recipient will never receive it. So stuff is censored a lot. But is that a bad thing? I don't know. I had to move the camera because my legs are getting cramp. Um, I don't think it's such a bad thing to not be able to speak poorly about the government or the leader or something like that. I don't think it's a bad thing. And I don't think it's a bad thing to prevent um, the sharing of something that will cause like outcry from the whole nation unnecessarily. If it's a situation that happened in a city or a province or something, it's not affecting the whole country. The whole country doesn't need to be upset by it. So from a free speech point of view, yeah, it's suppressing information, but from a controlling 1.4 billion people point of view, oh dear, wait. That's good, no, no, no. Ah, I'm not even sure what I just said now, but anyway, I think I was talking about like controlling 1.4 billion people. Um, ah, oh, you see that's the problem when you have a little baby walking around and interrupting everything that you do. Anyway, my point is I don't think the Great Firewall of China is such a bad thing. Because if you look at how different the internet is in China compared to the rest of the world where we're all sort of like living in the past, we're all sort of doing the same thing. Like everyone's using Facebook, WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, Twitter, and they're sort of like controlling everything. And here in China, we've got like stuff like um, Alipay, WeChat. WeChat and Alipay, these two, it's crazy. The stuff you can do within the app, like you open the app, you can buy stuff, buy cinema tickets, buy plane tickets, book a hotel, pay for your taxi, pay for your dinner. Everything within one app, and that could never have happened, as you can see with the rest of the world, it could never have happened if they allowed the American companies in, like um, Google, Facebook, Twitter. Um, if they were allowed into China, then the Chinese companies wouldn't have a chance to develop the way that they have. Before I came to China, I went on to the equivalent of YouTube, Yoku, and it was terrible, it was terrible, terrible, terrible. And now it's actually better than YouTube. You'd be surprised, YouTube lacks so many features that Yoku has. I'm not suggesting that the stuff you find on Yoku is better than YouTube, no. Because I think that YouTube is much better in terms of content and quality content. But in terms of the platform itself, Yoku is so much better, as is WeChat. It's so much better than any of the apps that we have back home, except for, you know, the censorship and whatever. But the features are so much better. So, yeah, the Great Firewall of China has helped to protect and help um, the Chinese economy grow. So, for that reason, I think it's not such a bad thing. And... Yeah, would I like it to come to the UK? Like, a version of that in the UK? Ah, No, but then if I hadn't, if I'd have grown up not knowing anything else and the UK had its own version of everything and its own, you know, quality internet um, environment, then I probably wouldn't mind it too much. So, ah, I don't know. What do you think about the Great Firewall of China? And when you think about it in the context of um, keeping 1.4 billion people's minds at ease. Do you think it's a good thing? Let me know in the comments down below. That's today's video for you. Just a little um, thought provoking there because I was having a conversation um, earlier and it just made me think about a few things. All right, yeah. Oh, and today is my mum's birthday. So happy birthday. I um, hope you're having a good one. It's still early at home. Well, it's 2 p.m. So yeah, hope you're having a good one and I'll see you soon at Christmas. All right, bye-bye.